Thank you, Father, for your word. God in heaven, you love us so richly. And you thank and you you sing over us. And our portion is you. You remind us our labor. We will get the fruit of our labor, the harvest of our service. And it's you, Jesus. You are our portion. Everything we work for is you. Father, take this broken vessel, this vessel that doesn't help his left hand from his right at times, this vessel that seems to stumble and bump into walls, that can't seem to put two sentences together at times, this vessel that has been broken. And deliver your word. Lord, these are words that you want to give to your body, to those who would listen. And we trust you. We love you. Can I get you to drink water? Jesus, we didn't come with words of eloquence, with words of persuasion. I come, we come weak and frail. We didn't come with anything other than a demonstration of the Holy Spirit. I thank you for your messages that you give us to encourage us and remind us you're in control. Thank you for where we are now. May we go forth not fearing what has passed and knowing where we're going to go. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay. Um, so, um, what you guys have there is a copy of, I'm going to read this. Not many people know about this, but, so I like, the kind of music I like listen, listening to is worship and praise and sermon jams. People say, what kind of jams are those? Sermon jams. <laughs> but, um. But um, yeah. I feel like this yeah. this hasn't come out. But I feel like we are uh, the the word that keeps coming back. It's time. It's time. So there's two parts to this. First, I'm going to read the vision of Tommy Hicks, and then the second is actually the message that the Lord has for for us. Um, so. Tommy Hicks, give you a little background. In the 50s, he was a very powerful evangelist in Argentina. He preached to Juan and Eva Perón in Argentina. He seen miracles. Uh, a guard let him in because the guard was real nasty and he, and he shared about Jesus. Um, guard had horrible acne skin issues. He was healed. Or he had some other condition. He was healed and he let him in to Juan and Eva Perón. Uh, and the Argentinian revival still goes to this day because of his labor. Which goes into the message after this. Tommy Hicks Vision, July 25th, 1961. My message begins July 25th, about 2.30 in the morning at Winnipeg, Canada. I'd be hardly fallen asleep when the vision and the revelation that God gave to me came before me. Now keep in mind, I had a similar vision, dream of the pride covered fear. This is sort of connected. The vision came exactly three times in detail. The morning of July 25th, 1961. I was so stirred and so moved by the revelation that this has changed my complete outlook upon the body of Christ and upon the last end time ministry. The greatest thing that the Church of Jesus Christ has ever, that has ever been given to the church, lies straight ahead. It is so hard to help men and women to realize and understand the thing that God is trying to give to His people in the end time. As the vision appeared to me after I was asleep, I suddenly found myself at a great high distance. Where I was, I do not know, but as I was looking down upon the earth, suddenly the whole earth came into view. Every nation, kindred, every tongue came before my sight. From the east and from the west, from the north and the south, 
and I recognized every country and many cities that I had been in. And I was almost in fear and trembling as I beheld the sight before me. And at that moment, as the earth came into view, it began to lighten the thunder. As the lightning flashed over the face of the earth, my eyes went downwards. I was facing the north. Suddenly I beheld what looked like a giant. And as I stared and looked at it, I was almost bewildered by the sight. It was so gigantic and so great in stature. His feet seemed to reach to the North Pole and his head to the south. Its arms were stretched from sea to sea. I could not even begin to understand whether this was a mountain or whether this be a giant. But as I watched it, I suddenly beheld a great giant. I could see it was struggling for life to even live. But his body was covered with debris from head to foot. And at times, this great giant would move its body and act as though it would even rise up at times. And when it did, thousands of little creatures seemed to run away. Hideous looking creatures would run away from this giant, and when he would become calm, they would come back. All of a sudden, this great giant lifted his hand toward the heavens, and then it lifted its other hand, and when it did, these creatures by the thousands seemed to flee away from this giant and go into the darkness and into the night. Slowly, this great giant began to rise, and as he did, his head and hands went into the clouds. As he arose to his feet, he seemed to have cleansed himself from the debris and filth that was upon him. And he began to rise, excuse me, raise his hands into the heavens as though praising the Lord. And as he raised his hands, it was even unto the clouds. Suddenly, every cloud became silver, the most beautiful silver that I have ever known. As I watched this phenomena, it was so great, I could not even begin to understand what it all meant. I was so stirred as I watched and cried unto the Lord, and I said, O oh Lord, what is the meaning of all this? And it felt as if I was um, actually in the spirit, and I could feel the presence of the Lord even as I was asleep. And from the clouds, suddenly there came great drops of liquid light raining down upon this mighty giant. Slowly, slowly, this giant began to melt, began to sink, as it were, into the very earth itself. And as he melted, this whole form seemed to have melted upon the face of the earth. And this great rain began to come down. Liquid drops of light, as it were, began to flood the very earth itself. And as I watched, this giant that seemed to melt suddenly became millions of people over the face of the earth. As I beheld this sight before me, people stood up all over the world. They were lifting their hands and they were praising the Lord. At that very moment, there came a great thunder that seemed to roar from the heavens. I turned my eyes toward the heavens and suddenly I saw a figure in white, glistening white, the most glorious thing I've ever seen in all my life. I did not see the face, but somehow I knew that it was the Lord Jesus Christ. And as he stretched forth his hand, as he did, he would stretch forth his hand upon peoples and the nations of the world, men and women. As he pointed towards them, this liquid light seemed to flow from his hand into this person, and a mighty anointing of God came upon them. And those people began to go forth in the name of the Lord. We uh, recently had an anointing yesterday. It was a fulfillment of a word, and he was anointed as a prophet. He was a nobody, and God said, you're a prophet. And he was in weeping because of the mighty power of God that flowed into his life. I do not know how long I watched. It seemed it went into days and weeks and months, and I beheld Christ as he continued to stretch forth his hand. But there was a tragedy. There were many people, as he stretched forth his hand, that refused the anointing of God and the call of God. I saw men and women that I knew, people that I felt certainly they would receive the call of God. But as he stretched forth his hand toward this one and toward that one, he simply bowed their heads, began to back away. To each of those who seemed to bow down and back away, they seemed to go into darkness. Blackness seemed to swallow them everywhere. I was bewildered as I watched it. But these people that he had anointed, hundreds of thousands of people all over the world, Africa, Asia, Russia, China, America, all over the world, the anointing of God was upon these people as they went forth in the name of the Lord. I saw these men and women as they went forth. They were ditch diggers, they were washer women, they were rich men, they were poor men. I saw people who were bound with paralysis, and sickness and blindness and deafness. As the Lord stretched forth his hand to give them the anointing, they became well, they became healed, and they went forth. And this is the miracle of it. This is the glorious miracle of it. By the way, you can find this on the internet. Just type in Tommy Hicks vision. It's many different pages. These people would stretch forth their hand exactly as the Lord did. And it seemed that there was the same liquid fire that seemed to be in their hand. As they stretched forth their hand, they said, According to my word, be thou made whole. 
As these people continued in this mighty end time ministry, I did not fully realize what it was. And I looked to the Lord and said, what is the meaning of this? And he said, this is that that I will do in the last days. I will restore all that the canker worm, the palmer worm, the caterpillar. I will restore all that they have destroyed. This, my people in the end times, shall go forth, and as a mighty army, they will sweep over the face of the earth. As I was at a great height, I watched these people as they were going to and fro over the face of the earth. Suddenly there was a man in Africa, and in a moment he was transported in the Spirit of God. Perhaps he was in Russia, or China, or America, or some other place, and vice versa. All over the world these people went, and they came through fire, and through pestilence, and through famine. Neither fire, nor persecution, nor nothing seemed to stop them. Angry mobs came to them with swords and with guns, and like Jesus, they passed through the multitude, and they could not find them. But they went forth in the name of the Lord, and everywhere they stretched forth their hands. The sick were healed, the blind eyes that were opened. There was no long prayer. One of the things that seemed after I had reviewed the vision so many times in my mind, and I thought about it so many times, I never saw a church. I never saw or heard a denomination. These people were going in the name of the Lord of hosts. Hallelujah. As they marched forward, everything they did as the ministry of Christ in the end time. These people were ministering to the multitudes over the face of the earth. Tens of thousands, even millions, seemed to come to the Lord Jesus Christ as these people stood forth and gave the message of the kingdom, of a coming kingdom, in this last hour. It was so glorious. God is going to give the world a demonstration in this last hour, such as the world has never known. These men and women are all walks of life. Degrees will mean nothing. I saw these workers as they were going forth over the face of the earth. When one would seem to stumble and fall, another would come and pick them up. There was no big I and little you, but every mountain was brought low, every valley was exalted, and they seemed to have one thing in common. There was a divine love that seemed to flow from these people as they went together and they worked together, as they lived together. It was the most glorious thing that I've ever known. Jesus Christ was the theme of their life. As I watched from the he very heaven itself, there were times when great deluges of this liquid light seemed to fall upon great congregations. And that congregation would lift their hands and seemingly praise God for hours and even days as the Spirit of God came upon them. God said, I will pour my Spirit upon all flesh. And that is exactly the thing God is doing. And to every man and to every woman that received this power and the anointing of God, the miracles of God, there was no ending to it. And then again, as these people were going about the face of the earth, a great persecution seemed to come uh, from every end of the earth. Suddenly there was another loud clap of thunder that seemed to resound around the world. And I heard again the voice. The voice seemed to speak, Now this is my people, this is my beloved bride. And when the voice spoke, I looked upon the earth and I could see the lakes and the mountains. The graves were open and people from all over the world, the saints of all ages, seemed to be rising. As they rose from the graves, suddenly all these people came from every direction and they seemed to be forming again this gigantic body. As the dead in Christ seemed to be rising first, I could hardly comprehend it. It was so marvelous. It was far beyond anything I could ever dream or think of. But as the body suddenly began to form and take shape again, it took shape again in the form of this mighty giant. But this time it was different. It was arrayed in the most beautiful, gorgeous white. Its garments were without spot or wrinkle. And the body began to form. And the people of all ages seemed to be gathering into this body. And slowly, slowly, as it began to form up into the heavens, suddenly from the heavens above, the Lord Jesus came, became the head. And I heard another clap of thunder that said, This is my beloved bride in whom I have waited. She will come forth, even tried by fire. This is she that I've loved from the beginning of time. As I watched, my eyes suddenly turned to the far north and I saw seemingly destruction. Men and women in anguish and crying out in buildings of destruction. Then I heard again, the fourth voice said, Now is my wrath being poured upon the face of the earth. From the ends of the whole world, the wrath of God seemed to be poured out. And it seemed that there were great vials of God's wrath being poured out upon the face of the earth. I can remember it as though it happened a moment ago. I shook and trembled as I beheld the awful sight of seeing cities and whole nations going down to destruction. I could hear the weeping and the wailing. I could hear people crying. They seemed to cry as they went into caves. The caves and the mountains opened up. They leaped into the water, but the water would not drown them. There was nothing that seemingly could destroy them. They were wanting to take their life, but they could not take it. Then again, I turned my eyes onto the body, arrayed in a beautiful white garment, and slowly, slowly, it began to rise 
from Europe, as it did Iowa. I had the same. I had seen the end time ministry the last hour again on July 27 at 2:20 in the morning. The same revelation, the same vision came exactly as it did before. Mm -hmm. COVID was probably the best thing that happened to the body of Christ. It was because it got rid of denominations. It got rid of doctrinal filth. It got rid of petty arguments, petty disagreements. And it said, death will not hold me. Jesus is my center. And now we're seeing it happen. We're seeing lives change. Denominations and degrees mean nothing. We are seeing people rise up. People you didn't expect. People from out of nowhere. They're rising up and they're forming. It's happening in this home. It's happening in this community. It's happening with uh, people around us. It's fun. It's exciting to watch because that means the Lord's coming. He's coming to get his bride. We can't lose heart. He is our great reward. 2 Timothy 4 says, the Lord, you know, the Lord will come get his own to all those who what? Love his appearing. If you love his appearing now and seeing his face and, and his life pierce your darkness, you got nothing to lose. 1 Corinthians 15. Go to 1 Corinthians 15. 55. This is the message. What is the sting of death? I mean, we sing about it a lot. Jesus Christ overcame death. He overcame the grave. What does that mean? Uh, Death has been swallowed up in victory. Death, where is your victory? Death, where is your sting? Now the sting of death is sin. The power of sin is the law. The law is everything here on this earth that wants to drag you down. Watchman Nee equates it this. He says there are two laws in this world. The law of gravity and the law of buoyancy. You can hold your arm up like this. Forever and ever and ever. And eventually, you'll have to put it down. But if there is a law that is above that law, like buoyancy was the term he used in the sense of a balloon. Well, let's put it this way. Earthly law and spiritual law. The law of the spirit is love, which is far greater than Torah. Far greater. More difficult to uphold. Yeah. You're never going to fulfill the law of love. You can't. There's no way you're going to do it. You can fulfill everything to the letter, and you will still be a rotten sinner until you fulfill Christ's law, where you give up of yourself and die, whether in your heart or in your body. Either way, that's the law that there's no way we can fulfill it outside of Jesus. And Watchman Nee makes the illustration. It's a law of buoyancy, or rather, spirit. You have the law of the spirit and the law of the flesh. The power of sin is the law. The sting of death is sin. Everything on this earth. So, let me keep reading. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my dear brothers, be steadfast, immovable, always excelling in the Lord's work, knowing that your labor in the Lord is not in vain. Who here has a job that they feel absolutely the Lord gave me this job, I'm to be here? The Lord called me to this place. I'm not here for a good idea. I'm here because God said be here. Guess what? That's labor in the Lord. That is you working in the Lord's field. Your work is not in vain. 
Your labor is not in vain. You are laboring what? To receive Jesus Christ, the fullness of who he is. That's your aim. That's your reward. We sang Psalm 73. Lord, you are my portion. You're not waiting for a new house or waiting for the kids to grow up and graduate high school, go to college. You're waiting for Jesus Christ. It's a personal revealing of Jesus Christ in you. Amen. And here. And to hear. Oh, glory. He is here. Absolutely. There will be a personal manifestation. The dead in Christ will rise first. I don't know how that works. I just believe what the word says. And then we, what, will not all fall asleep, but we will all be changed in a moment in the blink of an eye at the last trumpet. Some people will live and, boom, be transformed and be caught up with the Lord. How's that going to work? No clue. I want to see that. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Okay, I want to see my Jesus. I love the song in Christ alone. Till he returns or calls me home. Here in the love of Christ, I stand. No power of hell, no scheme of man. Here in the, I did, um, yeah, here in the blood of Christ, I stand. Oh, it, no, it's on. No power of hell, no scheme of man can ever pluck me from his hand. Till he returns or calls me home. Here in the power of Christ, I stand. There you go. So, what is this death? Is it this? Well, yeah. But how does that help you today? Christian? This is not preached in the church. This is not preached out there. Oh, I got all these troubles. I can't wait till Jesus comes home. What? You mean to tell me when he says I'm the resurrection and he does not live in you? That resurrection power has got to be here. Where what happens to you? Inconveniences. Disobedient children, problems at work, problems at home. Do you understand that that's death? It wants to drag you down and focus on the stupid stuff here. That's a sting. My Bible says Jesus overcame that sting. Death, where is your sting? I've told my boss, go ahead and fire me. I've lost everything. I'm going to be with Jesus. You can't kill me. You can't cut me. Go ahead, cut me, kill me, fire me, take my money, take everything. You can't touch me. I've lost it all already. To those who have been bought by the blood of Jesus and, and fallen upon their knees for Jesus, say, Jesus, I've lost everything. I'm yours. Guess what happens? That precious blood he shed. That's the grace that, excuse me, cost so much and that immeasurable grace, last drop of blood, paid death's demand. Death had a debt that you and I couldn't pay. We could pull 8 billion people. If all of us were to die, it's not enough. In one fell swoop, no, it's not enough. It is that which literally, this is, now we're getting into metaphysics. That which is of the spirit literally had to cover the demand that wants to drag us down to the ground. Do you guys understand that the, that the struggles you have are literally trying to, what, depress you to the ground? Or keep you way down with anxiety? I love this song. Are you burnt? Uh, what's that? Come to the altar? Oh, come to the altar. The altar. Yeah. yeah are, are you burdened and weighed down? My Bible said, Jesus said, uh, uh, Jesus came to lift us up. Not till, wait, just a long until I die. What? You're a useless Christian if that's the case. You have no purpose. You're waiting till the last, till the other shoe drops. What about today? Where's the victory to say, you know what? I don't care. I don't care what I see. I don't care the fact that this week has been hard. I've had no spiritual ecstasy experience. Pick a word. But all you had was a word. All you had is Jesus. You say, Jesus, I don't care. I'm following you. I love you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for this difficult person. Thank you for this 
insult because your grace is sufficient for me. I will boast all the more gladly of my weakness. You have not removed that thorn from me. Who in here has a thorn? I'm sorry. He's not taking it out of you. He, he will not lest you, what? What does Paul say? Lest I become too proud, elated. You showed me your grace that is all sufficient. And grace would not be grace unless you see how much it cost him so that you can have it free. I'm not talking cheap grace. I'm talking costly grace. Amen. It cost you nothing. It cost him everything. How could you not wait at the fact of everything for you? He gave you life. He did it for you. And yet we say, oh, stupid little thing, and yell at the kids, throw our dishes around, get upset, or worry about, oh God, how am I going to make this payment? Or, I don't have any money in my pocket. Or, or Lord, we're running out of food. When was the last time you said thank you? Mm. When was the last time you said, Jesus, thank you so much for what you've given me today? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. I have a house. Thank you, Jesus, for today. I have today. I have today's needs. I have today's needs fulfilled. Guys, I've been hungry. The kids and I have been hungry. Three days. No food. Bloomington. Mm. 2014. I said, Lord, you gave us shelter, and I thank you. And there was a miracle because somebody on the other side of the country said, God put you on my heart, what do you need? I said, what? We didn't say anything. And, uh, well, we need food and diapers. We're down to our last one. Next thing I find out, $500 was wired into my account. We were so weak. We were so weak. We couldn't go across the street to get food. We had to order food and we were so weak. I lost 10 pounds. Mm. I lost 10 pounds. For me, it's a lot. And uh, the Lord told me I was testing you to see if you would mm. trust me. And uh, mm. it's one thing if you do it alone. We have a dear brother in Africa. He's, he's, he's struggling. You need to pray for him. He's got um, illness and he is really struggling. And he's been through fire. He's made some sinful decisions, which he's repented and received God's grace. And he's receiving counsel and he's growing. He's in the fire. And he is going hungry. But God has strengthened him and still kept him alive. That's difficult. It's also difficult when you see your kids pulling on your clothes and say, Daddy, what do we have to eat? And I say, there's nothing here. Neither one, I'm not trying to elevate one or downplay another. By the same token, it's not easy. Trusting Jesus is the hardest thing anybody will ever do. Amen. It's the most difficult thing anybody will ever do. You've you got to come to call us understand that. This is not just a believe and get saved. No, you sign up. You sign up for the military. The military that, you, that if you get out, there are serious repercussions and it'll follow you. But understand if you come back. He'll take you in and put you back. And if you decide, say, hey, I want to be a special forces, guess what? You will go on such an adventure that will outshine anything you've ever seen. And you'll say, my Lord and my God have been faithful. Wow, you are an awesome commander. And we asked our friend who wired us the money, you have no, years later, you have no idea what you did for us. And she said, neither do I. You have no idea what I did for you. She said, I've never wired anything before in my life. I had to call my husband as another state to do it, to show me how to do it. But I knew what I felt. I wanted to be in CIA, Special Forces, whatnot. Being, taking up my cross has been the greatest adventure in all my life. I would trade it for the world. It is the most difficult thing. It's not something I would choose, but I know it's good. We ought to, you know, Balaam said to Balak, Balaam said to Balak, 
I can't curse who God has blessed. The word curse in Hebrew, kalal, means to make light. To bless means to bring down. We ought to be the most blessed people. Meaning, God has literally visited us down here. Bless, to bless means to bend the knee. But yet, the world tries to curse us and make us light. We need to be a people that truly, people say, the hand of God is upon you. The sting of death shouldn't affect you. To us, it should only be a sting, if anything. We do feel it in our bodies. We do feel it in our emotions and in our minds. The battlefield is in the mind. It is. If you're not a good mom, you're a piece of crap father, you're neglectful. Who do you think you are? You really wanted that one, didn't you? Yeah, if only you had a different house. You know, these kids, they're just too much for you. Why don't you just stop? Why don't you send them to school? We all struggle with our thoughts. You can tell the devil, be quiet in Jesus' name. This is where God put me. And I don't care how bad it hurts me. Because you died on you you were defeated at the cross. And I am victorious. You can torment my mind. I don't care. Because my eternal destiny is secure. Lord, your word is truth. Help us to hold on to these words, to trust you, to hold on to whenever stuff comes against us, whenever we just get discouraged, to understand that it is by your power, it is by your strength that we are secure. It is salvation belongs to the Lord. The sting of death has no hold on us. The things of this earth want to rob us of joy. The little foxes want to steal the vineyard. They want to steal and corrupt the joy of the Lord. Nehemiah says that the joy of the Lord is our strength. Father, may we rest in your goodness. Lord, I rebuke any distractions that want to come in and steal the message from anybody watching or anybody listening. In Jesus' name, you will... You will get out of this house. These are words of life that the Lord Jesus Christ is giving. This is to teach us to pick up our cross and say, you know what? I will praise the Lord while I have breath in my lungs. Because there is no grave going to hold me down. No grave of depression. No grave of anxiety. No grave of worry. No grave of financial difficulty. No grave of child disciplining challenges, no grave of family issues, no grave is going to hold me down in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus, for your good word. Thank you, because the grave didn't hold you down. It's not going to hold us down. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Bless those who hear. And may we rise up as the body of Christ. Fill us with your power. Fill us with your holiness. Let us be once again a people holy to the Lord. In Jesus' name, amen.